Okay, perfect. It's recording. All right. So, to help people declare health independence, we hold natural healing to be self evident that is empowered by their creator for the ability to heal. All persons can restore and thrive among those are positive energy, purpose, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, so then we have a question about, okay, so what is happiness? Okay, so according to the Webster Dictionary, happiness is an emotional state characterized by feeling of joy, satisfaction, contentment, fulfillment. Um, but it generally says that it's positive emotions and life satisfaction. Right. And we have to say that uh, happiness and pleasure are two different things. In this country, that there is a lot of pleasure. There's a lot of uh, ways that people can have pleasure, but not, maybe not so much happiness, because happiness involves satisfaction and fulfillment. In some ways, meaning. So then let's, let's discover that. What does that mean? So to answer Pat's first question for how does acupuncture work, we first have to come into this picture of the yin and yang. Okay, who's the first time seeing this symbol? I've seen it, but I did not know what it meant. Gotcha. So this means the balance of life. Okay, everything could be yin and yang. Uh, you can say, okay, well, so yang is the day and it's hot and strong and uh, you know black the yin is a dark night but what if you're talking about the day is there a yin and yang for the day depends on what you're comparing to right a day in a country nearby equator would be much younger than a day in let's say the nordic countries because it embodies more of the young energy does that make sense yeah so then, which one is better? What would you choose? Would you choose more yang or yin? Raise your hand if you choose, if you think the yang is better. Raise your hand. Who thinks yin is better? Nobody. <laughs> well, you gotta have both. Yep, you gotta have both. However, in the, in the modern day, Young has been uh, favored. Everybody loves young. Okay, everybody loves to be active, to be strong, to always advance, move forward, always be active, awake. I want to do more. Okay, and nobody really likes Yin. Oh, it seems like weak, um, passive. Maybe that's lazy. You sleep so much, quiet. Okay, so but in truth, everybody needs a balance of Yin and Yang. A healthy person is that they have a healthy amount of yin and yang. But as patients come in, first we assess, is this a more yang person or more yin person? So yin person exhibits all of these qualities, right? They tend to be more quiet, more passive. And then a young person would be, I'll, I'll be back there in the break room and they come in, I can hear them. All, all the way from the back and say, like, okay, this is a young person come in. So I already know this person probably have issues sleeping. This is that simple. Because they're imbalanced, because they're too loud. People that speak really loudly have, lacks yin. Yin includes what? Sleep. See that? So this is a general concept. We also went deeply over this in Acupuncture 101. So if you are interested go ahead and look at that video on YouTube where we mentioned uh, more on this and then acupuncture 102 which will uh, go over more in depth for the how acupuncture works <coughs> so now today's topic is spring season spring season is uh, these are different calendar dates okay so in Chinese we look at the uh, month here see how this is Oh, I can do this, cool. So this is the month. This is the third month from the fifth to seventh day, right? So all the green color represents spring. So I know we started, today's April 1st, so officially spring is almost ending, but 
this is finally starting to feel like spring, right? Although it was just snowing a few days ago. So we can see here, right? There is actually 24 seasons, small seasons of a year. In the modern day, we acknowledge with the Gorgarian calendar that there are four official seasons. There's the spring, there's the summer, which is red, there is the autumn, and then there is the winter time. So there's four seasons. But the weather changes more than four times a year, right? So then we have 24 micro changes. So 24 micro changes um, is what we need to account for because every time a season change also affects how your body works too. This is not very much discussed in biomedicine because biomedicine's first premise is that assuming all else equal, let me step out of the picture to look at what's going on. So then it is a concept not with you in it, but with you being outside of it, looking at everything being fixed. But nothing in life is really fixed, right? You're talking about one thing being a so independent event. That's very, very impossible. Because as you know, those of you that have life experience, things work in patterns. If you do things once, most likely you do that again. So uh, this is the English translation. So each of these Chinese now is translation in, you know, the beginning of spring, rainwater, waking insect, uh, the spring equinox. Who reads my newsletters here about the seasons? Okay, great. So if you uh, don't get my newsletters, please let our staff know. We can send you up for newsletters. So this year, I'm going to write all 24 seasons of each micro season, what are some thing, do's and don'ts that you can watch out for so you can start having you live healthier. And this is really the, in relative to how much light we have, okay? So right here, all this purple aspect is actually the shadow. Back in the day, people, when the people didn't have clocks, they have what's called a sundial. So it is a plate and they have a stick in the middle and they position it where they can tell if it's noon, right? Noon would be the needle is very short. And then as the needle gets longer, it's more, the sun is over there, right? So it's nighttime, the sun is over here. And then between the seasons, so sometimes the sun would rotate this way and then the sun would be over here so that you can tell overall the needles are longer and shorter. So this is what this is talking about. So for example, summer solstice, virtually you have no shadow. So you can see the needles over here, right? You're looking at it, needles pointing at you. So as summer is ending, the, the shadows gets longer and longer in relative speaking. And then in the winter time is the shadow is the longest. So what, what means spring is that when spring begins is that we can see drastically the shadows starting to diminish so that the sun is more and more on top of us. That means that the days are hotter and that the days are longer. And then until summer solstice, that's when the day is the longest. Okay. Okay, so then we have next. So spring is a time where it's a shift from yin to the yang, okay? Mirroring the image, uh, the energy of the season for best results. So this is a concept that uh, it's hard to describe. So springtime is like a kid. So this, this could look like an adult, but assuming this is a, a young, young woman maybe in her teens right so she's really curious she's afar and she's looking into the binoculars to see what's going on she's very playful full of life so this is how we uh, pers uh, impersonate spring so at this season it's good to be full of life this is good to be more curious it's good to start a new hobby because this is what wood element kind of represents um, is everybody following me so far? So, so far, just a quick recap, we've gone over that there are 
four big seasons, okay, but 24 micro seasons, but six of those micro seasons are spring, right? There's six for each. And in general, the spring season is kind of like a kid that's very curious, okay? Kind of like Carmen. <laughs> Hi, Carmen. So, next. So, spring season is the season for sprouting and growing, right? It's the developmental stage. It is when seeds start to come out of the dormant phase. So, in the seed phase, is more like winter, right? So, winter is really stagnant. People stay home, okay? When it's, uh, that's when the seeds stay in the ground and dormant. So, when the spring start to come, the seeds start to germinate and then they start to sprout, right? So this is a very good time in the springtime. So how do we as a person to sprout? Right, so this is a good time to maybe find a new hobby, start a new venture. Okay, so people say, okay, what is a good time to start a business? I'll say, hey, springtime. Right? What is a good time to uh, start a new book? Springtime. Okay, what is a good time to make new friends? Springtime. Well, you can argue that, hey, you know what, I go, to, uh, I go to church every Sunday, I can make a friend any time, but hey, there's still a better time because we're following the rhythm of the season. Remember, we talked about springtime, all life start to spring, right, to sprout. So it's smart and easy and effortless for us to make a friend in the spring season. And you'll find out that for people that don't like to make friends, if they like to make friends, the season will be spring. They're more open to do it because springtime is naturally very curious and, uh, uh, you know, childlike. Hey, Sarah, can I get some water? And then next is the theory of five elements. So then, thank you so much. So we talked about uh, different things transition to each other, right? Every time I say Sarah, Siri start to <laughs> jump out. That's been a that's been a challenge. Okay, so okay, there. Okay, so right here. Who thinks this is fascinating so far? Okay, who thinks this is, uh, is kind of boring? Okay, nobody. Good. Um, I've personally found this very fascinating even as a kid. So here's the spring season. We see it's all green, right? Or actually, this is the spring season. And then summer is when it's full bloom. Winter, it's kind of like fall colors, right? Winter. And then guess what? We do this all again. With nature, you'll find that it's very sustainable. Nature doesn't need a special government program for sponsorship for you to recycle. Nature is actually very, uh, does a very good job recycling itself. You don't need to wait, uh, hold your breath. Spring will come after winter. You can bet on that. You can bet on winter will come after fall, just so, just like everything else, right? So, how, this energy also flows through us, not only through uh, the year, four seasons, but through our own bodies. A lot of times, people feel tired when they get a nighttime, right? You don't need to try to sleep. A lot of people, assuming you get acupuncture and you're, you know, not so stressed out. At nighttime, you should feel kind of tired. When I wake up in the morning, usually I should feel kind of curious, okay? And then at the, uh, noontime, I should feel like, hey, I want to do something. Sun is out, right? Dinner time, okay, you know what, I want to kind of enjoy the fruits of my labor, spend time with my family, okay, do some family activities. And the winter time is when people say dormant, it's kind of like the night time, I want to sleep, it's time to go to bed. So first, we have to know that our body naturally does that. Why? Because nature naturally do that, and we are a part of nature. We're one piece of it, okay, next. Uh, prove it. Scientists would say, prove it. All right, so here we go. Uh, in 1727, a French scientist discovered circadian rhythm. But this was conveniently, conveniently discovered 5,000 years ago by the Chinese already. 
we've already had something similar with uh, what times correspond to what energy channels in the body. We're going to go over more of on each energy channel in our uh, acupuncture 101, but today we're just going to focus on the green ones, which is the spring one, which is liver and gallbladder. <laughs> but as you can see, in the morning, 6 a.m., is when your heart start to speed up a little bit, okay? And then you start to get hungry around eight, you wanna eat. From 10 to two, which is the spleen, small intestine, that's when your body functions the most. Why is that? Because it's summertime. People are productive over there, right? And then down here is when you start to slow down a little bit, okay? Your body temperature start to lower, and then that's when you start to sleep. So we can see that transitioning from, uh, you know, heat to start to being cold and okay, more winter, so on and so forth. There is a little exception where fire starts, to, starts again, but that's just within your body. That has to do with like sex drive. So then over here, uh, we have to see right, right before it, this is when your um, body temperature is at the max maximum. So people start to want to engage in, uh, you know, uh, sexual activities, whatnot, or have relations. In France, they actually say that from seven to nine, there's a special name for the hour where people sleep with their spouse or other people's spouse. Anyways, I'm not French. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna call out some volunteers, okay? Who wants to read this for me? Christina. So the liver, gallbladder, and wood. The eye, the tendon, anger, spring, wind, calling sound, green, sour, east, and 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. Okay. Um, in acupuncture, we require a different type of intelligence for people to learn. In to be very good at modern knowledge, what you need is a uh, very logical and sequential intelligence. But in acupuncture, we actually want correlative thinking. So what that means is that everything is in categories. So the green is wood, it's also spring season, it's also the eyes, it's also tendon, it's also related to the emotion anger is also related to the wind, to green color, to the east, to sour. Okay, wow, what does that all mean? That means that this all had to do with each other. So the person that hates sour taste, they also hate, uh, for the most part, anger as an emotion. They also hate the color green. They also hate spring. They also hate all these things and they probably also have allergies vice versa if somebody loves the green color they probably also like sour taste they probably also like all these things yeah yep so if you love green there's a very high chance that you also like spring that you also like everything that's associated with spring right if you think about it it kind of makes sense right because from a timing standpoint if you're in springtime it's all the spring that's happening. It's all of this happening at the same time. Okay. Now, what do you mean by eye? Eye is uh, the opening to liver, and it's related to the uh, wood element, which is the springtime. Oh, okay, good for you. So, Athena, uh, you know, it loves it so much. Her eyes are green. <laughs> Okay, so we talk about eyes watering. Why is that? Because especially in springtime, if anybody has issues with the eyes, this is the time to have it. So what is the worst time to get an eye surgery then? Yeah, spring. So there's not a good time to have eye surgery. There's not any good time to have a surgery in general, but actually, um, 
you know, especially with eyes, you don't want to do it in the spring. You want to do it in the winter. Why is that? Because winter nourishes wood. Make sense? So this is the wisdom of the ancient. Who invented this? Somebody. Kind of like pyramids. Nobody really knew who built the pyramids. Some people says the ancient Egyptians, the pharaohs, aliens, we don't know. Where did this come from? We actually don't know because this is before writing was invented. This stuff was carved onto the walls. So this was seen as a gift to the Orient where we inherited the gift of healing and this is part of that. So next. Um, okay, so just quickly to go over, right? On top of the wood, wood element, we had the fire element, so this is the tongue, joy, summer, bitter taste, south, okay? You can see spleen, water. So each one has their own little group. So you can kind of see this as uh, this is the green team green. So team green, the eyes, the tendon, they're all friends. So each of these guys are little friends in their own little group. So maybe that'd be a good uh, thing way to think about it. And as we talk about, this is further going into how does acupuncture work. So what we want to do is to, this is the 12, 24 hours in a day, right? Oh. Did you say 24 hours in a day? What else is 24? The seasons. the seasons, yeah. Yeah. So as you know that you see that everything is starting to connect is that there's 24 hours in a day. Every two hours corresponds to a meridian channel. Okay. So the, in this case, the red is the yang. The blue is the yin. Remember, we talked about the yin and the yang. The yang is kind of like the one that's always extroverted and talking, and then the yin is kind of like the one that's really shy, right? So they're kind of like brothers and sisters. They're together. So today, we're going to cover the liver and gallbladder channel, but the purpose of acupuncture is that we want to adjust your energy flow, so all 20... All 12 channels flow seamlessly throughout your body. Um, how? The next question may be how. So you see the gallbladder channel starts from the head and it ends on the foot. And the liver channel starts from the foot, ends on the head. And then the lung channel starts from the inside, ends on the outside. And then the large intestine channel starts on the finger in there. So there is a sequence of energy flow throughout your body, throughout the hours of the day, throughout different areas of you. Okay? So we're just going to leave it at that. Um, we'll delve more into that in uh, describing how it all works. But to give you a little preview so that you can watch my other videos is that how many spinal columns are there on the human body? One. Huh? Just one spine. So how many spinal columns? Oh. 24? Yeah. Yeah. Each of those correspond to two different seasons. So if someone has, let's say, a liver and gallbladder issue we also we I look at the tongue I say you have neck pain why because remember it goes from spring summer right uh, autumn and the winter right so then I already know the first couple columns is messed up so mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you actually see that 
with all the advancement in science, science and technology, it does not contradict with this, actually reconfirms this. That's why they call it research, you know? This is search knowledge. We're getting research knowledge, right? I see it again. But, uh, okay, who's ready for some uh, liver and gallbladder channel? So, this is the approximate, right, acupuncture pathway. Now, most of you watching this video are not acupuncturists, but I'll just quickly kind of, uh, just to show you, this one just starts from your big toe and then comes from the anterior of the leg, coming up to the genitals, going up to the, to the liver, and then the energy circulates then to the lungs, and then it goes up to the head, okay? This is important because when people have allergies, this is where everything is. It's in the lungs, it's in the nose, in the forehead. Like allergy wouldn't be on the side of your head. Allergies here because the energy flows here. A lot of patients, they come in and have, oh, I have a sinus allergy. I put the needles in, most likely the pain is gone right away because I know I can treat you now and you come in a spring season. Great time to treat allergies because that's when allergy happens and that's when allergy starts. If someone has allergies in the fall time, that's because you didn't have a good spring season. So the chances of treating allergy in the fall, not very effective, but in the spring season, very good. Okay. So uh, next, we have uh, liver, okay? Liver is like wood. So wood relates to flexibility, growth, and creativity. And it's also responsible for emotions, tendons, neck, vision, nails, and hair growth. So a whole bunch of things. Um, let's back up a little bit and talk about flexibility, growth, and creativity, okay? Um, why does that have to do with liver? Because that's how plants are. So you think about, remember there's the team green. Team green has a whole bunch of little friends. The friends are what? The friends are, uh, the, uh, the friends are anger, right? The friends are color green. The friends are taste sour. One of the friends, their occasional friend is flexibility, growth, and creativity. Just remember that for now. And then later we all link that together, okay? Okay, so for you guys who are very much interested, feel free to rewatch this uh, on YouTube and then you can read through all of this. But essentially, this is just to talk about the internal trajectories of the liver channel. And then, so this means that for patients who has issues with liver, most likely they will have pain of unknown origin anywhere along the liver channel, including the genitals. So for men who has ED, right, who has a hard time forming erection, that's also liver related, that's also springtime. Okay, so. All right, so this one we can spend a little time on. <clears throat> it's very interesting. The ethereal soul is, stays in the liver. <clears throat> Who wants to read this? Volunteer? Okay, yes, Olivia. Um, Han is a concept in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, that refers to one of the five basic substances or aspects of the human body and mind. In TCM, each of the five substances, chi, blood, essence, spirit, and fluids, correspond to a particular aspect of the human body and play an important role in maintaining health and balance. The concept of Han is often translated as the ethereal soul or the spiritual soul. It is believed to be associated with the liver and responsible for the functions of consciousness, thinking, imagination, and mental activities. 
The Han is said to be closely related to dreams and is believed to leave the body during sleep and return upon waking. In TCM, its imbalance or dysfunction of the Han can lead to various mental and emotional disorders such as insomnia, anxiety, depression, and schizophrenia. <coughs> Therefore, the treatment of mental and emotional disorders in TCM often involves regulating the Han and restoring its balance through acupuncture, herbal medicine, and other forms. Okay, <clears throat> so back in the old day, when science wasn't a dominant belief of how humans work, um, you know, we talk about mind, body, and spirit, right? So this is that spiritual aspect. Who's been somewhere before, and, and you're like, I feel like I've been here before, right? Mm -hmm. So that's actually the huin doing its work. When you're asleep, your body your spirit actually leaves your body to go around different places. Now, for some of you, maybe it's hard to believe, right? Okay, prove it to me, right? What do you mean you prove it to me? So for those that say that, um, you, then we can take a more psychological uh, stance to, to explain something like this, okay? Is that this is how your body kind of reconstruct and uh, decompress all the knowledge and everything that you've seen. So then, <clears throat> a lot of times when patients come in to get acupuncture, their follow-up visit, I'll come in and say, how'd you sleep? A lot of patients, they start feeling better to say, hey, I started dreaming. Whereas before, I didn't have dreams. I didn't have dreams for the longest time. And this is because, good, your liver is starting to work so well where you start to dream your huin, your ethereal soul is starting to work. And this is actually where people start to feel better. Their anxiety start to feel better. Um, who knows someone who takes very heavy pharmaceuticals, especially anxiety drugs, and then they just walk around like a robot? Oh, hi, how are you doing? Okay, latte, okay, $3, here you go. And then, right? And then this person don't feel happy. So this is because when you take pharmaceutical medications, it first filters through your liver, and then your liver releases the enzyme. So in some ways, your liver is being overworked. So this is why when you speak to somebody, it's almost like I'm talking to them, but it seems like something about this person is missing, right? So then they're missing this joy. They're missing this emotions. So that's what the liver is. And this person most likely does not have good dreams or they don't have dreams. Um, it doesn't matter which faith you believe in, but dreams has always been a practice where you receive messages from the divine or you receive messages from your ancestors. When someone's having liver issues, they're literally severed from that spiritual connection. A lot of times when you dreams, you receive messages and that's where people make a lot of drastic changes. How do some people go from sleeping under the bridge, don't wanna do anything with their life, and then the next day they go and they wanna be a millionaire, start this company, and then they just do it. Nobody actually knows scientifically how that happens. The only way to explain is that they've been visited by angel, or they've been visited, God sent them a message, now it's your time, and then but how you receive that message is not when you're awake, it's when you're asleep. Wake up the next day a new person, right? And then, so with acupuncture, come back to how does it work? Sometimes it's almost like, it's not that acupuncture is making you receive these messages, it's acupuncture is undoing what society is doing to people so that they become how they are naturally. Because as human beings, we should have dreams. We should have received messages. We should have uh, all these feelings and not just, right, oh, I'm just working, 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 and then making transactions all day. So your liver is kind of like the general of an army, okay? That's a picture of Napoleon. So it is in charge of uh, planning, it's in charge of execution, resolution, resistance to fatigue, okay? When the liver is not functioning well, it's almost like a general is not functioning well. 
So if you ever ask somebody, hey, what do you want for dinner? Yeah, I don't know. What do you want? Right. Some kind of liver thing going on. Because it's, they're having trouble deciding. Remember, we're talking about the general of an army is that if someone with a really healthy liver, they should be like, okay, you know what? I want to have uh, pasta and then I do it and then we did it. That's it. Okay. So there's that. And then, uh, so healthy aspect of liver is that, right? Someone could be, could experience kindness, benevolence, compassion, generosity. Then a negative aspect would be anger, irritability, frustration, resentment, jealousy, rage, depression. And the, the sad part is that because when you take medications, you go through the liver, the more you do that, the more the liver is having a hard time doing their job, the more you feel these emotions, the more you have to take that medication. And that's why you keep taking more of it. All right, the gallbladder. So if you remember the liver, it's like a plant, okay? Uh, the gallbladder is like a tree. They work with each other by um, helping each other. So how I would say about gallbladder is that it is um, kind of a decomposer so that you have uh, compost, right? What? Trash you don't want or feces you throw into the uh, you throw into the ground and then what what does it do plants actually love it right plants is the only thing that loves that so this is why also wood element is representing compassion is that for those who are broken right convicts who those who are committed crimes those are kind of like the feces of society right only through something like a compassion that we can turn that into something useful. So this is kind of like this phase where gallbladder stores the bile, which is pretty much the garbage coming from the liver, and then re excretes that bile into the stomach and spleen so that it can start digesting food. So this is the gallbladder channel. The most important part is that we know gallbladder starts on the head and then goes down, ends on the foot. A lot of times, phase two of uh, getting angry is starting to have migraines on the side. Migraine, uh, anger headache is usually headaches on the side. Headaches in the back and the front is usually sinus headaches, okay? And this is what we're talking about. When your body is having gallbladder issues, you're having a hard time digesting meat. These people are usually more prone to headache, migraines on the side. So gallbladder is kind of like the Merlin to King Arthur. This is supposed to be Merlin, by the way. I know he looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> so. You can think about where a general goes out to fight, fight battles and then he comes back, I gotta take this out on somebody. I have some bad things that happens. And then the Merlin, which is the gallbladder, is kind of listening to, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and those is, it's their fault. Yeah, no problem, I understand. And then right, try to come up with a strategy. So this is the supporting role. Gallbladder supports the general. Gallbladder supports the liver to help, right? Uh, facilitate things along. So in the real world, this is kind of like the general's advisor. This is kind of like the, the vice president in some ways. Okay. And then this is uh, a gallbladder affects the quality and length of sleep. So for people who are frequently waking up, something going on with the gallbladder. This is also why we don't encourage people to eat late at night because especially if you eat something like pizza, Taco Bell, very greasy, you lip, your gallbladder is going to be working all the time, and that trigger creates a uh, very light sleep. So a deficient patient will wake up uh, suddenly, you know, unable to fall asleep again, so on and so forth. And this too, when a gallbladder is strong, 
you can have better decisions and somebody uh, and also what's strong about gallbladder is that you can have a lot of courage so people that um, have a lot of courage like you know those people that do Red Bull they they do these stunts like uh, riding a bicycle over a ridge a gorge or they do these like climbing buildings with no fence on these people have a very strong gallbladder if these people come to me and they're like oh I have a hard time digesting meat I was like that's very impossible because I know that your courage comes through you having a healthy gallbladder therefore your healthy gallbladder will be enough to secrete the enough bile for you to break down food so these people also have very good digestion and this is also why that right because liver gives bile to gallbladder gallbladder then sends the bile to the stomach so if liver feeds uh, unhealthy bile and then that sends down a lot of bile in the stomach people start having nauseousness nauseousness and uh, different things bad digestion because that's the liver overacting on the stomach so that's how that happens through the gallbladder okay so how do you know how do you know if somebody has liver and gallbladder issues we look at the tongue so when we do an initial exam or re-exam we look at patients tongues and that's where it can have a lot of information and you can see the gallbladder liver is on the side of the tongue some people is the side of the tongue is uh, very deficient, right? So then it'll be white, pale, with ridges on it. Some people's liver is too much, so it'll be red, right? So these people would be, yeah, go ahead. You know, do you want to have a question? Okay. So these five things are the common disorders that we treat in relation to the liver, okay? Who wants to read uh, this? Volunteer? Okay, Olivia. Uh, first one. Um, <laughs> do you have the first one? Mm hmm. Okay. So, some common disorders caused by liver and gallbladder and food and liver cheese stagnation. This is a common disorder. It refers to the impaired flow of chi, vital energy, in the liver. It can cause symptoms such as irritability, mood swings, depression, mental problems, dizziness, motion sickness, and infections. Yep. And in a tongue, how we tell the liver cheese stagnation is actually a tongue would look like this. And then you will see that the redness slowly moves to the front and then this tip is red. So then the liver is getting a lot of stagnant energy in the chest. So what that means is that this person will feel like something is sitting on their chest. Okay, as if like it's hard to breathe. I can't get comfortable. Like I feel irritated. This is why. So that's liver chi stagnation. Um, and because you remember the liver, we talked about. Let me back up a little bit. The map for the liver is right. It goes from here all the way up, and then liver chi stagnation is that. The chi, the energy, gets stuck right here. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we put acupuncture needles on the liver channel and other corresponding channels so that the energy would then keep moving. So that's how patients right after acupuncture, they all of a sudden, oh, you know what? I feel much better. I feel calmer. So that's why. Right. And then liver fire. So this is when typically when people eat a lot of greasy, spicy foods, okay? Ir irritability, a dry mouth, bitter taste in the mouth. And this could also be caused by a prolonged sickness. If someone's been sick for a long time, okay? Uh, I.e. post-COVID symptoms. Or if you had a lot of vaccines, that'll do it too. Uh, damp heat, gallbladder. Okay, so this is a condition where uh, typically patients like, love sweets. If they eat a lot of sweet, that's where they get damp from. Um, and then that'll cause abdominal pain, so on and so forth. I know this is not the most exciting thing, but then 
gallstones is when the gallbladder doesn't do its job to excrete bile into the stomach. So then all the waste from the liver accumulates in the stone in the, gall, uh, in the, gall, in the galls. So with acupuncture, we can also help with that. And then liver wind. This is when people have tremors. So I want to talk about this a little bit. So liver issue, liver, remember, it's related to the emotions, right? So someone's having long-term emotional trauma, okay? And on top of that, when they're outside, they don't layer themselves up. Wind gets into them, okay? Through their neck, through their ankles, they start having liver wind. So this could take a while to treat, especially if someone also has a lot of dampness and damp heat in the gallbladder. And then they'll just start to shake. Uh, and then how do we know that people have liver wind is in, when they stick their tongue out, their tongue shakes. So we take a tongue picture. It's hard to get a tongue when to try a couple of times. So that's how you know you have uh, liver wind or any type of wind, general wind related issues. Another question people might ask is that, okay, well, I stick my tongue out, my tongue is shaking, but I don't have shakiness, I don't have dizziness, I don't have tremors, I don't have headaches. Not yet. Okay. So what happens is that when people age, all the disease, they accumulate. And then when people get older, all the disease, instead of being dormant, they start to develop because your body's not strong enough to suppress the disease. This is also why a lot of times when scientists have a hard time, they're like, okay, well, this is not always true. Look, my tongue looks like that. I don't feel that. Not yet, you don't. But once you just come see acupuncture is when you start having it then that confirms it. So um, what we, do, we want to do is to use the tongue as a gauge in progress. Right. Okay, so here, everybody's seen this chart if you're a patient of mine. So there's the different tongues, right? So now you have a better idea. So you see all the tongues of the side having issues, right? The ridges on the side. And I apologize, this is not a very high definition image. Um, on the side, this, these people have different uh, liver-related issues. So this is called a liver deficiency. You obviously see there's a part of the liver and gallbladder piece of the tongue is missing. So this is a person that's too tired to be angry. And then also people have red tongue on the side. These people, I see the tongue look like this. It's like, okay, well, this person probably gets angry all the time. Um, and then also, right, this is liver chi stagnation, is that all these tongues lead to here. So this person has discomfort in the chest. And then there's a whole variety of other tongues that are in between all these tongues. And some tongues could be a combination of a few. So then based on clinical experience, then I can properly tell patient what's going on with them and what would be a good course of treatment. And then to answer Athena's question, how long is your healing journey? Is that as long as it takes until we restore the tongue to a normal state. And it also is, depends on what your goals are, right? If you're a very busy person, all you have time for is, <clears throat> like I know a patient that works 60 hours a day, uh, a week, and then they have kids at home, and then they have a wife at home, five kids, this guy is working multiple jobs, then hey, you know what, maybe you do need to take medications just to help you over, but maybe just to relieve some pain, right? But then if some patients are like, okay, you know what, I have the means, this is the time for me to feel better, then, then we can tailor a longer treatment to help you feel better. Uh, and this is not talked about in the modern healthcare system, which is kind of a sad story, because uh, it's in my opinion that the modern healthcare uh, is focused on the quarterly earnings for the shareholders rather than people's health. Yep. And not that the government really cares so much because the politicians are uh, heavily influenced by the shareholders. So it is not the goal to help you stay healthy, it is to help you rid of symptoms at no matter the cost. Some of these symptoms and medications could cause other medic symptoms 
but they don't really want to spend too much time helping you guide you away from that as far as they're concerned hey you know what that's what you want i give you what you want what's next right but i believe a true health care is that you actually feel better so that you can stay better okay okay so how can you stay well in the springtime this is olivia's question and this is also partially athena's question is that right who wants to read this christina how to stay well in the springtime yeah wake up earlier go to bed earlier in tcm it is believed that the wood element is the most active during the hours of 11 p.m to 3 a.m mm -hmm. and getting enough sleep during these hours is, is important for liver health yep so general rule is that if you are someone as a partier you want to stay up late okay uh i got a lot of firewood i have to burn it and for me to burn it i have to the, the sun has to go down summertime in summertime you wake up early sleep late in winter time you wake up late go to bed early springtime wake up early go to bed early autumn time wake up late go to bed you can go to bed a little bit later does that make sense okay good so springtime is a great time to heal the liver remember it's the liver time so make sure that you go to bed earlier so the do's and don'ts right go to bed and not sit, sit in the bed <laughs> watching your phone who does this by the way anybody confess to it <laughs> oh. I, I used to do this. That's when I give patients my own cell phone number. Then I figured out I shouldn't. Because then <laughs> patients start texting me at night. <laughs> okay, so what's a good thing to do in the spring, right? Um, who wants to read it? Okay, Christina. Get outside and exercise. Spring is a time of increased activity and movement in nature. Mm -hmm. And it is important to incorporate more physical activity into one's routine during this season. Outdoor exercise, such as walking, hiking, and gardening, can be particularly beneficial for liver health. Yep. So you essentially go outside. Like a kid, play with mud, right? Do some gardening. Go for a walk. Start a new hobby, right? Hopefully your new hobby isn't Facebook, because... A lot, nowadays a lot of people sit there and play with their phones right not 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 that good right okay I'll read this one eat fresh foods so liver is associated with sour taste okay so anything that's sour uh, somebody says okay what about like Mike's hard lemonade right so come on now <laughs> it has to be natural and not alcohol okay so you incorporate some kind of sours with lime, lemons, any type of sprout, grapefruit, right? fermented foods, vinegar, put some vinegar in different things. And obviously eating like a sauerkraut pizza doesn't count. Okay? That's uh, very heavy. You want to eat something light. Manage stress, right? So liver is, uh, remember, like a kid. What happens when you overstress a kid? You stun their growth, right? So don't overstress a kid. So kind of for kids, you, send them, you let them run, right? You let them be curious. You let them ask a whole bunch of questions. So yourself too, in the springtime, try to allow yourself to do that. I know as adults in modern world, it's kind of confusing because we can't get to be ourselves. Is that right? Be light, manage your stress, right? Go on different retreats, yoga, breathe okay don't be like this guy all right uh, I get like this when patients don't take care of themselves and then obviously avoid alcohol consumption I know alcohol is fermented but it's still right not good for you because it is really heavy on the liver eat something light okay veggies All right, how do you stay healthy? How long does it take for you to feel better? 
are you able to be spring at spring? So these are the virtues of spring, right? Compassion. Why do we say compassion? Remember, it's like wood, right? It's like your gallbladder. The gallbladder turns something wasteful into something good. That's kind of like what compassion is. You're helping someone who's in very low situations and bring them into something useful, right? So this is when spring is going on, you're embodying spring's energy, you're embodying spring's doing. Be flexible. So a good time to do yoga is in the springtime. Yoga is good to do in general, but springtime, very good. People who are flexible love spring. Spring loves flexible people too, okay? <laughs> Encouragement, same thing here, right? When some, someone wants to do something, hey, I wanna read this new book, don't tell them you can't do it. Because then it's kind of like, you know, a sprout, a tree is looking to grow. Don't try to tell people what they can't do. Try to find ways to support them, tell them what they can't do. Be curious, okay? Be playful, be creative. Start doing some art. These are spring activities. So we went over what to do, right, physically. And now this is kind of what to be. How you can embody, how you can get the mindset for spring. Okay. I like you. Do you like me? Okay, so kids write that. So you like the spring, but the spring like you, right? So we always have to think, right? It's like, I want to play basketball, but does the NBA want me? Okay, so that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> so what is the reason spring does, wouldn't like you back? Probably because you're not like spring, right? Remember, there are the groups of friends, right? If you want to be team green, when team green is everywhere, you have to be somewhat like team green so you have a good time in spring and what we do is we do acupuncture to help people adapt better to that so uh, as we're wrapping up is that we want to find when you come and do an initial exam is that we ask a lot of questions about our patients like you know what once you feel better what do you like to do it has to do with liver, it has to do with a person's soul, which is in their liver, is that once we get you feeling healthier, what are some things you enjoy doing that's not only satisfying your body, but also keeps your soul happy so that you can stay healthier? Okay? Yeah. What role does location, physical location, play in a lot of this? Because some people live in climates where it's like, like Edmonton, Canada, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does that do to the populations of these? Mm -hmm. So in the modern day, people migrated, right? But typically, Europeans would live in a place, right? Asians would live in a certain place. Africans live in a certain place. <laughs> um, generally speaking, even if you're in Africa where it never snows, there's still a winter season because it's in relative to where they are in that area. Um, if it's a place where it's pretty much spring all the time, like, I don't know, for example, uh, maybe like Atlanta, Georgia, is always nice there, right? Hardly snows, I don't know about recently, but hardly snows, not a lot of harsh winter. So people in that climate would behave generally more like spring and autumn. But if you have uh, someone in harsher environments, they would most likely have a culture that's more winter-like. Mm -hmm. And then likewise, in Mexico, right, what people do salsa, right? So it's very happy, music is very happy, food is spicy, right? But salsa, something like that, probably wouldn't originate in like Antarctica, right? It's too cold there. So then people would then think differently. They're more philosophers and kind of planners, kind of like something like that, more reserved, more than in summer, people are more open, right? So 
in in conclusion, acupuncture is to help people adapt to the natural environment and be effortless in their healing journey. So this can help people that live in an environment like Detroit more so than maybe Oregon. Oh, gotcha. I see what you're saying. No, it could help them in all kinds of environments because once you are living in a place for quite a while, so for example, when I go to Florida, 65 degrees, I mean shorts, yeah. right? It's so warm. But people in Florida, 60 guys, nobody's on the beach. Yeah, because it's, it's relativity, right? So once you live somewhere in three months, your body start to adjust, adjust what winter means to you. The, the people kind of tend to take things for granted like that, but that's just natural survival mechanism. Yeah. Any questions? No? Okay. All right. So, hey, Tab. We're closing up. Um, I love to get a photo with everybody. In the future, I like to be one of those TED Talk people where I can talk to a whole bunch of audience. Yes. And it means a lot to me that when I'm speaking here, it's also practice for me. Every time I do these talks, I get better. I remember the first and second one, I keep stuttering. But now I'm getting better. So thank you for being, being a part of my growth. So. Thank you, thank you for coming. Uh, for about a decade. But talking and teaching, maybe like two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I'll have Tabitha do is that she's gonna go around the room just to record what is your biggest takeaway. And after we record it, if you don't like your face to be uh, put anywhere, then just tell her and then we'll, we'll cut you off. So essentially later on when we have big events. Um, I want to move from this venue to maybe like a Marriott place where it can have a lot of people come over and then later on I could do bigger uh, presentations. So I find that very exciting and meaningful and that's what I get passionate about. So, great. Okay. I'll start with you. What did you learn, Christina? I learned that the liver and the gallbladder go hand in hand take care of them and the symptoms and as before I had to do acupuncture for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that my body's like the seasons and uh, the different seasons mean different things to my body so they have, I have to learn to listen to it. Absolutely. I learned one thing I did not know about is how important